Hey everybody. Today we're talking about Bayes' theorem, also known as Bayes' rule. Bayesian statistics is a deep and rich area, but at its heart is a very simple idea. The probability that an event will occur should be updated as new information about the event comes in. Mathematically, we express that idea with Bayes' theorem, which in its most simple form looks like this. The probability of B given A is equal to the probability of B times the probability of A given B divided by the probability of A. Really, this is just a restatement of the multiplication rule for conditional probability, which says that the probability of A and B can be written in two different ways. The probability of B given A times the probability of A, and the probability of A given B times the probability of B. Obviously, the upper statement only makes sense when the probability of A is not equal to zero. The denominator of the right-hand side, the probability of A, can be, be, can be rewritten in a more useful form, albeit a slightly longer form, using the law of total probability. Um, I have a whole video on the law of total probability. I'll throw a link up top to that. You should think of the left-hand side of these equations, the probability of B given A, as the updated probability estimate for B based on the new information obtained about event A. Um, in light of that interpretation, Bayes' theorem comes with some additional terminology. The probability of B is called the prior probability. It doesn't reflect any information about event A. The probability of B given A, that is to say the left-hand side of this equation, is called the posterior probability, and it does include information about event A. Okay, let's do an example. Suppose that a medical test for a certain illness has a false positive rate of 1.2% and a false negative rate of 9%. That is to say, when you don't have the illness, the test will still say that you do have it 1.2% of the time, and when you do have the illness, it will still say that you don't 9% of the time. If the overall prevalence of the illness is 12 in 100,000, find the probability that someone who tests positive for the illness actually has it. Let's start just by writing down the probabilities that were given in a more official fashion. First of all, the probability of actually having the illness when we select someone at random is 0 0.00012. The probability of testing positive when you do not have the illness, that is to say the false positive rate, is 0.012. The probability of testing negative given that you do not have the illness is 0.09. That's the false negative rate. Finally, let's take a note of the probability that we actually want to compute. We'd like to find the probability of having the illness given that you've tested positive. So, of course, we're going to apply Bayes' theorem. The probability of having the illness given that you've tested positive is equal to the probability of having the illness times the probability of testing positive given that you have the illness divided by the probability of testing positive. Now I'm going to rewrite the denominator using the law of total probability. So the probability of testing positive can be broken down as the pro probability of testing positive given that you have the illness times the probability that you have the illness, plus the probability of testing positive given that you do not have the illness times the probability that you do not have the illness. And now we can plug in the probabilities that we know. For instance, the probability of having the illness is 0 0.00012. The probability of testing positive given that you have the illness um, is not something we, that we wrote down on the previous slide but it is um, the probability of a complementary event. And so we can write its probability explicitly using the law of complements. One minus the probability of testing negative when you have the illness. And of course, that's the false negative rate. So we can plug that in, it's 0.09. Simplifying all of this out, we get about 0 0.00090. That's the posterior probability. Notice that it's much closer to the prior probability, 0 0.00012, than you might expect. So the fact that you've tested positive is not an ironclad guarantee that you actually have the illness in this case. Bayes' theorem extends to cases where there are more than two possible events of interest. So if we call those events B sub K, we can write Bayes' theorem just like this. Um, this is essentially the same formulation as we saw a few slides ago probability of the event b sub k given a is equal to the probability of b sub k times the probability of a given b sub k divided by the probability of a. This formulation becomes a little more um, distinct when we use the law of total probability to rewrite the denominator, the probability of a, using all of the different b sub k's. 
Um, here, we're assuming that all of the events B sub K are disjoint and cover the entire sample space S. That is, they form a partition of that sample space. This version of Bayes' theorem, um, or the version of Bayes', the Bayes theorem given earlier, is just a special case um, of this one, where the sample space S is partitioned into exactly two sets, B and B prime, so B and its complement. One more example. Suppose a company has the following data on customers entering a store. What's the probability that a customer who makes a purchase is under age 25? So we're trying to find the probability that someone is under 25 given that they've made a purchase. And we can compute that using Bayes' theorem. We're going to find the probability that they're under 25 times the probability that they make a purchase, assuming that they're under 25, divided by the probability that they make a purchase. Now, the probability that someone is under 25 and the probability that someone who is under 25 makes a purchase, those can both be found in this table. So really, we just need to compute the denominator here. And we're going to do that with the law of total probability. The probability that someone makes a purchase is equal to the probability that they're under 25 and make a purchase, plus the probability that they're 25 to 45 and make a purchase, plus the probability that they're 46 to 65 and make a purchase, plus the probability that they're over 65 and make a purchase. And then each of those individual probabilities on the right-hand side there can be rewritten using the multiplication rule for conditional probability. 0.24 times 0.37 plus 0.45 plus times, uh, let me start that line again, 0.24 times 0.37 plus 0.45 times 0.25, and so on. Simplifying all this, we get 0.262. That's the probability that a random person entering the store actually makes a purchase. We're ready to substitute into Bayes' theorem. We um, take the probability that they're under 25 from this table, it's 0.24, the probability that someone under 25 makes a purchase, 0.37, and the probability overall that someone makes a purchase from the previous slide, 0.262. Simplifying all that out, we get 0.34. About 34% of purchases are made by people under the age of 25.